Picture this. You're in the middle of a route and the Pokemon you're training just got paralyzed. You want to run back to the Pokemon Center to heal it up and you don't want to get any more encounters on your way back, but you're too lazy to pull out a repel. Chances are you did something like this. After all, everyone knows that running through the grass increases your odds of getting attacked by a Pokemon. Better to go a little slower here to avoid any encounters, it'll be faster in the long run. A classic Pokemon trick right there. But there's just one problem, and that's that, well it's just not true. I don't mean to brag or anything, but I've been playing Pokemon for a very long time. To the point where I doubt there's very much that I don't know about these games. Seriously, it's taken up way too much memory in my brain. It's a problem. Help me. Though my knowledge of these games is vast, it's not always correct. And every once in a while, I find myself realizing that something I believed to be true for the past 15 years was actually a straight up lie. So today, I'm gonna be sharing five things that most people believe about Pokemon that just aren't true. And don't worry, this isn't some crappy listicle made by someone who's clearly never played a video game in their life with things like, um, did you know that there isn't actually a Mew underneath the truck in Pokemon Red and Blue? Uh, like, yeah, this isn't 1996 anymore. I'm pretty sure literally everyone on the planet knows that. These are five things that, until recently, I genuinely believed were actual parts of the game mechanics, and odds are, you did too. Get ready to question your entire childhood. Richard, hit that intro. This first one is actually crazy to me. I only learned it a couple of days ago and it was literally the whole inspiration for this video. I hinted at it in the beginning, but running through the grass doesn't actually increase your odds of getting an encounter. This is something we've all heard from our buddy Timmy on the playground. I'm pretty sure that actual NPCs in the game gave you this tip, but if you look at the math, this isn't a thing and it never has been. What running actually does is increase the frequency of encounters based on the simple fact that you are moving from tile to tile faster, but the odds of getting an encounter on each tile remains the exact same no matter how fast you're moving. So if you know that you have eight tiles of grass to get through before getting back to the PC, walking's not really gonna help you. I've literally been trying to retrain my brain the past few days to get over this because this is something that I always believe to be true. Every time I run through a patch of grass without a repel, I still cringe even though I know that it doesn't matter. But I mean, what can I say? Timmy's venom runs deep. Number two is all about catch rates. Have you ever been in a situation where you're trying to catch a Pokemon, you're not sure if you'll be able to damage it without killing it, but you think, hey, I'm 20 levels above it, so it shouldn't be too bad. Well, I've got some bad news for you. When catching a Pokemon, the level does not matter at all. So long as you're playing in a game prior to Generation 8, that is. The actual capture formula the game uses is kind of crazy, but basically all that matters is the percentage of HP the Pokemon you're trying to catch has left, any status conditions they have, and the type of ball they're using. The level of either Pokemon doesn't factor in anywhere here. In generations 8 and 9, they changed the formula a bit, so now the level of the Pokemon you're trying to catch may be factored in, but the difference between your level and theirs still doesn't matter at all. So, when you run into that level 5 Arceus on the first round of your next randomizer Nuzlocke, I got some bad news for you. It's still gonna suck. And as a quick bonus fact on the topic of catching Pokemon, no, there is no button mashing trick to make catching Pokemon easier. I feel like everybody knows this by this point, but it was literally the only thing that ever came up when I was trying to research this video. So there you go. All right, for this third fact, did you know that Jesse and James of Team Rocket are just 15 years old? No, no, bad Timmy. This is a fact I've seen floating around the internet for a long time. I have 
no idea where it came from, but like everything else in this video, it's not true. In the original Japanese version of the second movie, they are stated to be in their late 20s, so 25 at the youngest. This never made it into the English translation, which explains why a lot of non-Japanese speakers might not know this, but the 15 thing? Yeah, that's not real. Also, while we're talking about ages, while well, Ash Ketchum famously began his Pokemon journey on his 10th birthday, this was something created exclusively for the show not the games. And in fact, none of the characters you play as in the games are 10, like most people believe. The youngest are 11, and some are straight up old enough to drive. The fourth myth is about the Pokemon type chart. Well, I've always been pretty good at keeping track of all the various weaknesses. For some reason, after 15 years, I still haven't gotten the resistances straight in my head. There are just so many that don't make sense, but when in doubt, it's a pretty safe bet to assume that a type at least resists itself. Right? Sure, things like Dragon and Ghost are super effective against their own type, pretty wild when you think about it, but most types are not very effective against themselves. Or at least, that's what I thought, but that's actually not true. Only 9 of the 18 types, or just half, resist themselves. So it looks like my one trick for remembering this stuff is out the window. If you want a simple mnemonic device to remember which types resist themselves and which ones don't, me too! Hit me up in the comments if you got one. I need help. Before getting into the fifth and final myth of the video, I wanted to throw in an honorable mention here. I felt bad including it as a numbered misconception because I wasn't sure if it was a real myth or if I'm just an idiot, but Mawile has never been a dark type. I always thought that it was a steel and dark type because it's got a big old mouth, I associate it with moves like bite and crunch, and I don't know, it kinda has a dark vibe to it. When Gen 6 rolled around and Mega Mawile became a thing and gained the fairy type, I was always second guessing myself like, oh, wait a second, is regular Mawile still steel and dark and then it changes to fairy when it mega evolves, or did they change the regular one too? But nope. Mawile was always a pure steel type, it never had the dark type in any form, and from generation 6 onward, they slapped the fairy typing onto it for both the regular and the mega forms. Did anyone else get confused by this, or am I just crazy? This final myth is going to sound super obvious when I say it out loud, but I guarantee you that a lot of you still won't believe me. Pokemon accuracy does in fact work like regular percentages. Pokemon math doesn't work different from regular math. Focus Blast has an accuracy of 70, meaning that unless you're facing a Pokemon with double team or something, you are going to land your Focus Blast 70% of the time. Sure, this means that you can expect it to miss more often than a higher accuracy move like Draco Meteor, but despite what it may feel like, you are still going to land more Focus Blasts than you miss. You're also just a lot less likely to get super salty about that Focus Blast that you didn't miss. And there you have it. Five common misconceptions about Pokemon that were hopefully actually pretty interesting to you. Plus a few bonus ones sprinkled in there for good measure. Thanks for sticking around all the way to the end of the video. If you like this, let me know by clicking that subscribe button. Another common misconception, it probably won't notify you when I post new videos. In fact, it might do literally nothing for you, but it's free and it does help me out in the algorithm. And I like watching numbers go up. What can I say? I'm a man of simple pleasures. This is a different style of video than what I usually do. I didn't have a ton of time this week to work on something longer, but I did have fun putting this together. So if you enjoyed it, let me know and throw some more misconceptions about Pokemon in the comments. Who knows, maybe I'll do a part two at some point. Hmm, hmm. I usually uh, I usually end this these videos with some sort of big punchline that I've been slowly building up to throughout the whole video, but uh, I don't really have one of those this time. So uh, I don't know, just, just that thing where I like punch myself from off screen. Yeah, all right, hit me. Wait. Oh.